I consider human factor responsible for inducing dynamism of the social structure, which is required for ensuring the growth of social power. Therefore, I want to underline the importance of a synergistic perspective for this growth. What do I mean by this? An individual should be open to free exchange of ideas with the social environment through numerous interactions and various types of cooperation. Cooperation is said to be the basis of modern society. Market, banking, internet, education, economic establishment, political parties, civil society organizations are all powerful in organizing and promoting interaction. However, the social structure fosters only minimal levels of expression and interrelationship of individual potentials which puts the society far from reaching the optimal level necessary for its harmonious and prosperous development. How many governmental and non-governmental organizations across the world today work to find answers to a limited number of social questions? And how many of them actually consider each other as partners? Their fight for leadership, justified by the inevitable competition for a limited number of influential positions and resources within the social structure, rules out a great amount of cooperative opportunities. How many collaborative, uh, uh, collaborative interactions and exchanges of ideas are there, been different, uh, are, there, <clears throat> are there between different intellectual groups worldwide considering human values? How many such organizations build concepts of global de development, progress and peace from different perspectives. It is clear that the integration of all these perspectives in a wider framework requires constructive cooperation of all these organizations, which would definitely lead to unprecedented human achievement. Every human contact is an opportunity for constructive ex exchange of ideas. The wider the range of difference between the expressed views, the larger the content to be understood and lear learned about. A multicultural encounter is a clear example supporting the statement, showing potentially very different in individual frameworks that need to be constructively confronted. Such an interaction is an excellent opportunity for expressing diverse individual potentials, establishing understanding and cooperation between individuals belonging to different cultures, and thus generating additional social power. However, we are aware that, this, that it is still difficult to establish sincere and productive relationships in multicultural environments worldwide. Even though the entire human cultural endowment is the product of organized or spontaneous exchange, assimilation and adoption of different cultural perspectives and influences, it is quite difficult to come out of our own limitations grounded on particular cultural perspectives. A collective consists of individuals connected through a large number of diverse structural and additional subtle relations. relations. Productive human interactions are based on different types of exchange. In classical social science, three types of exchange have been recognized. Exchange of material goods, favors, and other non-material goods, such as information. Even though emotional responses between people have always been acknowledged in social science, they have always been part of human interaction. They have only been recently been acknowledged in social science. And the new category has been introduced, exchange of emotions. I consider that this type of social exchange is crucial because of its unstructured and unpredictable nature. For a su successful cooperation in any kind of work, a certain degree of emotional balance between the participants uh, is necessary. Emotion should enable and strengthen cooperation, but they also might prevent it. The theory of social groups tells us that in society, each individual has his or her primary group, comprising the family, the secondary group, including friends, co-workers, and other acquaintances. I say that in human cooperation, there are three basic emotional levels. The first one concerns the consciousness that the individual has towards the goal he or she is aiming to accomplish. The second one concerns the emotions that the individual has in relation to his or her collaborators, which make part of the secondary group. And the third level of emotions is produced by the individual being immersed in the world and includes his or her perspective of the self, the primary group, and the social life. I think that when we consider human relationships in regard to the growth of social power, we should take into account all types of social exchange, not forgetting the additional subtle type, the exchange of emotion, which can be sanctioned but also energize and engage human relationships. Thank you.